I was missing so much. It was quiet, it was simple, it was heartfelt, it was all those things of just turning my life over to the Lord. And He slowly started to transform me, but there wasn't a transformation of heart until I surrendered it to the Lord, and He took it and made me a new creation. We didn't have to go looking outside because He, he, he brought it to us. But you leave it up to Him, and you don't leave it up to you. If He wants to bless you, let Him bless you. God has so much more for us than we don't even know, because we don't know that we don't know anything. I just stopped and I said, Lord, if I'm missing out on anything, if there's anything more that you want me to have, then I want it. And that was my prayer of surrender. Welcome to the Exposing Catholic Show, where we expose the lives, interactions, and stories of Catholics. We have our guest today, Debbie Fittimore, a child of God that is just on fire for Jesus and looking to serve him in the best possible ways. That is very true. Very true. <laughs> awesome. So let's. we're going to be talking about the Catholic Charismatic Movement. So can you just break down a little bit, like an overview of what exactly that is? Okay. Um, again, I'm no expert on this, but I can tell you some basics. Um, the Charismatic Renewal for the Catholic Church began in 1967 um, at Duquesne University. And um, from what I understand, there was a graduate student and a professor who had experienced... Um, was called the baptism in the Holy Spirit at a, um, I think it was the Episcopalian church, and they were set on fire. Um, so they, they, they brought it back due to Cain. I guess a couple of their professors were, were baptized in the Spirit, and then the word got around. Um, and then there was a retreat at the Ark and the Dove uh, retreat house, and students were there, and they wanted to experience this as well. And so during the course of the evening through prayer, uh, they prayed for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit came down, and they experienced him in a tangible way. They uh, started speaking in tongues, and that was sort of the birth in the Catholic Church. Um, the one graduate student uh, got a hold of Notre Dame, the University of Notre Dame, and I guess they had had something happen over there at some point afterwards and told them of their experience, and then together the Notre Dame had a big a big conference and um, that was sort of the start of it and that was uh, back in 1967 um, by 1975 I believe um, Pope John no I'm sorry Pope Paul Pope Paul the sixth um, officially welcomed the charismatic um, into the church so it was like you know a couple years later but they they recognized it and um, since then um, all the popes Pope um, John Paul II, Pope Francis, Pope Benedict have all acknowledged it and welcomed it into the, you know, they acknowledge it in the Catholic Church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was, um, that was the start of it. Um, and there is um, a cardinal named Renario Cantalamesa, and he is the papal preacher for the popes, which means he preaches to them. I think it's normally like, um, you know, during Advent and Lent that he preaches, but he had gone through an experience um, as a, a priest that, and he was really like anti, you know, charismatic. He, you know, didn't really understand what was going on. He would hear about this stuff and was really anti. And, but through different circumstances, um, he found himself being baptized in the Holy Spirit and just being transformed. He surrendered his life totally to the Lord. Even though he was a, a Capuchin friar, he, you know, this total surrender came about in his life. And um, shortly after that, he, was asked to be the papal preacher um, by um, John Paul II. And that was normally, they said that was in 1980, and they said that normally that was a, a five-year stint, but it's mm. been 44 years and he's still doing it. <laughs> okay, so this man who was transformed by the Holy Spirit has been the papal preacher. And I just think that speaks volumes. He has written mm. books, he has spoken about it, and he's just, um, he's just like one of my heroes um, in the church for that. Um, another thing I had seen, um, Billy Reed's, um, podcast with mm -hmm. you and he mm -hmm. was talking about, you know, some priests going out to, uh, St. Peter's square and, and saying, you know, yelling at the, the window, Caraggio, Caraggio. And, you know, and about, you know, have courage, have courage. And he didn't mention the name, but this was, uh, Cardinal Cantalamesa. That was the man who was out there yelling mm. for, uh, St. Paul, St. Paul, St. John Paul the great, um, to have courage and to move forward in his, um, his papacy. So that is, um, that's 
a general background. Um, I saw some statistics that there were, this was probably maybe 10, 15 years old, but they said that there were approximately 120 million Catholic charismatics around the world. And they said on top of that, there was probably 60 to 120 million that had gone through the renewal and were now working in ministry or just, you know, had that transformation of life. And they were, you know, not so much in the renewal anymore, but they were, um, you know, living the life, a fullness of, of the charismatic life. Mm-hmm. So That's wild. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so it gives it credibility, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, just a little. <laughs> <laughs> what a, so I feel like a lot of Catholics would if they never really heard about it or haven't been introduced to it, it would feel like kind of a little, eh, just like, I don't know, like that, that thing that they're doing over there is not for me. It feels a little odd. And I know your story kind of started uh, like that. Can you dive into those things? Okay. Um, well, okay. So my story, I was exposed to aspects of it um, when I was in my, my twenties and my mother-in-law God rest her soul, was just a wonderful holy woman. And she had been exposed to the healing ministry. Um, and so she had taken my husband and I um, to some healing services, like, you know, back in the 80s. And um, it just was fascinating to me. You know, I was, this was all new. Um, one, actually, there were two moments that I can think of that were um, significant in my, like, being drawn to this. One, I was pregnant with my third child. And um, I never found the sex out the sexes of the children. It's like you know, I just like let it you know whatever God's gonna give us. And um, but we went to a healing service at Saint Noel Church, and this woman named Barbara O'Malley was there, and she had this healing ministry. She was out of Chicago, and before um, towards the early part, she was praying for individual people, and there were two women there that had children who I think, I believe one had cancer, like infants or, you know, babies, and another one um, had something wrong with her. And I just remember being pregnant and just, you know, praying for this child that I held. And um, we went up and they were praying over people. And when they prayed over, they there was many, most people, I would say, rest in the spirit where they fall backwards and they're on, on the floor. And I remember resting in the spirit and I felt like a literal whoosh come through my head through my body and out it was like you know if you're standing outside in a windstorm and you feel that you know that was like what was Mm -hmm. going through me and I got up and I just knew that I knew that I knew that there was no shadow of a doubt that I was going to have a girl and that she was going to be healthy and I had nothing to worry about and it was just it was just so strong and profound that I had no you know so when she was born it was my daughter it's like okay I knew you were coming <laughs> so um, that was very powerful for me um, another another time uh, my husband had had some struggles and he um, came to a place this, this was um, after he had gotten some help and we went to another Barbara O'Malley service this was years later and they were going in for prayer and he was sort of like, eh, this stuff, they're paying those people off. They're paying them to lay down and fall down there. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, no, but I mean, he knew, but he was just like, it was just different. Right. Mm-hmm. And, um, so he's like, stay with me, stay with me. So I was behind him. And so we were going up there and they were just putting people like all around the altar, up on the altar, behind the altar, you know, just all over. He's like, stay with me, stay with me. So we did. And Barbara, had prayed for one woman in a wheelchair where she would actually stop and talk to her and everyone else. She's just like praying, praying. People are just going down in the spirit. Um, it comes back to us and then she stops to talk to Vic and, um, she says that, you know, God has, um, heard his prayers. You know, he sees him. Um, he's, he's going to use him to minister to other people. And it's like, it was important that I was next to him because he remembers nothing. He just felt that he felt like that there was like a bonfire in front of him. This heat was so intense. He said, even as she was coming closer, this intensity of heat was just like coming over him. So she's praying over him. He's not comprehending anything. And then he goes down in the spirit. I'm able to like remember what she said. And then, you know, I go down. So that had a profound impact on him and, and, and I. And he was able to do to minister to people that, you know, were struggling in different ways. And the Lord did use him in that way. So, uh, you know, those were just, you know, two things that like, what did my appetite, if you want to say for the charismatic renewal? And so I was open to it. We had friends who, uh, were in different churches that, you know, were, were, you know, 
into the, um, uh, I don't know, the Pentecostal type things and they would, you know, pray and, you know, and it's like, okay, that's, that's cool. I, I never had any like aversion to any of that kind of thing. It was, um, so as time went on, we would have different opportunities to experience different things. And, um, it was in 1991, in November of 1991, I was invited to a non-denominational woman's, um, retreat. And I knew a bunch of these ladies, you know, they were fun, whatever, I'll go along. And when I was there, a lot of them kept asking me, are you saved? Are you saved? Like, I believe this, you believe that. You know, I knew that the basic Mary things or the basic, you know, Eucharist. But, you know, for the most part, you know, we're sort of on the same page with a lot of things. <laughs> and so I couldn't, you know, figure out why they were just like pressing mm -hmm. on me. And I was getting like angry. Like my spirit was just getting angry. I mean, it was nice and sweet to them, but I was, you know, getting angry. <laughs> And that was so Friday and then Saturday night, I was like almost left Saturday. I was like just so frustrated because I felt like I had like this sticker, not saved, you know, across my forehead. And it's like, everyone knows, you know, it's like, what do they know? Um, so I went to the, I, I stuck around and I went to this prayer session at night and we were on a, a circular table and I was able to, I needed to turn my chair to face the front. So my back was to them. And the woman did like an altar call. You know, she asked people who wanted to get prayed with, you know, to come forward. And I'm like, I know they want me to go. You know, you know they just are waiting for me to go. You know, it's like, I'm just going to do this. I'm just going to get it done and over with. <laughs> so I went up and the woman came and she prayed. And she's starting to pray over me. And she says, oh, no, she starts She's telling me what she's prayed about. So she goes, I see you in a box. She goes, and it's like little cardboard box. And you're like kicking and you're kicking at the walls. And she says, don't you know, you just need to look up and your heavenly father will help you step out of the box. And then she looked at me, she's like, are you saved? And I just like lost it, right? I'm like, what is it? What is it? It's like, <laughs> I just, I didn't understand what they were getting at. And so there were two women behind who were catching and she says, you know, talk to her. So we stepped away and they, and they talked to me. I'm like, I, I just don't get it. I don't know what, you know, they feel like I'm missing. And um, so they, they said some things. So I said, you know what? So I just stopped and I said, Lord, I said, if I'm missing out on anything, you know, if there's anything more that you want me to have, then I want it. And that was my prayer of surrender. Okay. I was tired of fighting it. You know, it's like, it was just like this frustration was so great in my spirit that weekend. And I was like, okay, Lord, is there something I'm missing? You know, mm -hmm. is there something more you want me to have? I want it. And so, um, he gave it to me. Okay. And that was the prayer that transformed my life. And it wasn't like, you know, fireworks are going off and on. No, it was quiet. It was simple. It was heartfelt. It was, um, you know, all those things of just turning my life over to the Lord. And he slowly started to transform me like things that were not good, just started falling away. You know, things, you know, language, you know, like movies. I mean, I never thought anything wrong with, you know, seeing an R rated movie or, you know, like a swear word here. And that wasn't horrible, but you know, it just, it was like living in the world. You know, I was just mm -hmm. like, you know, I, I thought it was a good Catholic. I mean, I, I would be considered a good Catholic because we went to church every single Sunday. My kids went to Catholic school. We said our prayers, you know, we did all those kind of things that good Catholics should do, but there wasn't a transformation of heart mm -hmm. until I surrendered it to the Lord and he mm -hmm. took it and made me a new creation. And it's been a continual process. That was, the night was November 2nd, 1991. And I can look to that, that time as my new birth in Christ. And he has, you know, taken me up until this day, still transforming me, still changing me, still trying to, you know, perfect me into him, his image. But that's what mm -hmm. I, I desire to do. We've got something special for all our Catholic organizations. Now, before you skip past this part, it's not an ad. It's more like an incredible opportunity to take your digital presence to the next level. And I'm going to let you in on a little secret here. Something only for our podcast listeners. We, DM Productions, have a two-day Catholic social media makeover course. It's an online course specifically made for Catholic organizations. It will take your social media to the next level. And we make it easier than ever with our step-by-step -step video walkthroughs, cheat sheets, customizable templates, and more. Catholic organizations, let's start creating the quality and results that secular businesses have, but with the depth and beauty of Catholicism. Oh, and did I mention the price? $700. But remember I said I was going to let you in on a little secret? 
Use code DM podcast to get it completely free. No credit card required. Just pop that code in and you're all set. Head over to www.dm.productions slash social media makeover or click the link in the description. Now back to the show. I have a question. So I've had a similar experience okay. to that, but how did you think about the Catholic church after that happened? Because that wasn't in a Catholic church. Did you, were you like thinking, you know, I need to become non-denominational because I've had this crazy experience in this church and never in a Catholic church. Like what was your thought on that? My thought was I went back to my pastor from a Catholic church and he had come over. He was a family friend. Um, and it's not father Jay. Uh, <laughs> he was a family friend and he came over and I pulled him aside I'm like, okay, this is what happened to me. Why did I have to go to a non-denominational church to figure this out? How come you didn't tell us about this? You know, why did you know? I was like, really like angry. And he's like, he goes, I have said that in different ways. You just didn't have the ears to hear, you know? So I just, and, and I'm like, okay, you know, cause that was the time, right? That was the way. Um, did I feel like we need to leave? No. Um, my husband had actually had a similar experience around that time too. And he's like, okay, we're going to the assembly of God. We're going to do this. I'm like, I, I no, you know, I'm Catholic. I, I have no desire to leave my church. So for a while there, we have three little kids and we're going to mass. And then we're going to an assembly of God service just to get both. Mm. And it finally, you know, that didn't last that long because it just was not sustainable. Um, but, uh, you know, I do know people, many people that felt like they had to leave. And the way that God is so good, and he knew the desires of my heart, um, that was in November of 91. In February of 92, uh, my kids were at NDES, and I had to run to the, the school for something. I was leaving, and this woman walked out the door with me, and I recognized her from church. And um, we just said hello. And from walking from the door to the parking lot, I don't know how it got there, but she invited me and my husband to her house because they were hosting um, a prayer meeting. And I'm like, sure, I'm looking for something, right? I, you know, mm -hmm. and, and so we went and that was in February of 92 and up until COVID because um, I had to pull away because of my parents who live with us. Um, I went to household meetings like every week for 92 through 2020. Okay. That was a part of our lives because it was the Catholic you know, part of, you know, but getting the, you know, the prayer and the worship and the praise and the, you know, the healing and all those things that the charismatic renewal offers, we were able to get it through this group called families in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so the Lord was so good, you know, that didn't, you know, we didn't have to go looking outside um, because he, he, he brought it to us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess I'll just say, I don't even know if I've told, I've told you this before, but I've never said it on the podcast. Um, so during COVID, um, I had like a lot of family stuff going on. Like my brothers were sent to juvenile detention. Like mm. there was a bunch of drama that mm. was going on. They were unjustfully sent to juvenile detention, I should say. Um, so there was a lot of like anger in my heart towards the judge that sent them there. Mm. And like, it just broke my family apart. Um, and also during COVID, like it's my senior, my junior year going to my senior year, like high school is just a freaking mess. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, wow, it's like life just is not the best right now. And um, so it's the summertime and my friend who uh, is non-denominational was like, hey, do you want to go to my youth group? And I was like, well, I got nothing better to do. Like, I'll, yeah, I'll go. And so um we go it was during like a worship night and i never have been in like that sort of environment before it was so much different than like the catholic church like you stand and kneel and you you say the prayers and everything this is like you raise your hands like there's worship music there's a stage there's lights everybody's like the whole drum sets on there like it was just a lot different um and so they're like doing praise and worship and this up this person comes up to me and they're like, have you been saved? Like, do you have a relationship with Jesus? And I'm like, what? <laughs> Hello? Like, who are you? And um, I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. And there was like three other people, separate people I'd never met before uh, that said the same thing. Like, do you have a relationship with Jesus? And I was like, what? 
who are these people? Like, who told them? Like, what is happening? And um, like, I didn't, I always put a smile on my face. So nobody kind of knew what was happening. But um, like inside, like I did feel very broken. And so that night ends and there's another um, like fun night on a Tuesday. So that was Sunday and Tuesday comes around and I'm like, okay, I'll go again because I don't have anything else to do. And so we go there and they're doing like their praise and worship and the a couple more people come up to me saying the same thing. Um, probably about like eight people in total saying the same thing. And they were like, yeah, you just, I feel like you are super, super bubbly. Like you always have a smile on your face, but on the inside, like you're very broken. And I was like, what the, mm-hmm. please stop <laughs> calling me out. Like, this is not cool. Um, and uh, then the pastor that night came up to me and he's like, do you have a relationship with Jesus? I'm like, who the, yeah, stop, yeah. like <laughs> stop already. I was getting frustrated. Um, and he was like, I, you know, I just kind of told him like, uh, no, I guess not. <laughs> and um, he's like, well, do you know how to pray? And I was like, listen, like I've been Catholic my whole life and like, I don't know. Like mm-hmm. I've, I've never felt anything. Like I haven't had. I haven't felt a relationship with Jesus. Like my life just keeps going downhill and downhill and downhill. And I keep going to church and like I pray all the time, but it just keeps going down and nothing seems to be getting better. Um, so he's like, well, you know, just pray, pray to him. I was like, I don't know how to do that. And he's like, well, do you want somebody to pray with you? I was like, sure, whatever, we'll do that. And so we're outside. <laughs> it's um, summertime. They have people playing volleyball, people you know, throwing a frisbee around, people playing soccer, and there's a bonfire, there's music playing, there's mosquitoes biting my legs. Like, it's, there's a lot of distractions going on. So I'm really, really trying to focus. Um, and she's praying with me, and I'm like, okay, I'm just going to close my eyes, like, and just, you know, try and focus on what she's saying. And then all of a sudden, I, like, get this vision in my head um, it's not like a memory, but like something just images are flashing, flashing in my mind. And it's like the footprints prayer. And, um, it's me. I know it's me and I know God's right beside me and the hour on a beach. And then the sky has my memories flashing in it. And, um, it's like all the times (laughs) where I was alone, like, when my parents got divorced and I really missed um, my dad, like, and I'd just cry myself to sleep, he would be there, um, like, cuddling me. Uh, there would be another time where I'd be singing on stage because I was into theater and he'd be sitting there in the audience watching me. Um, and there was um, an interview with the judge right before he sent my brothers to juvenile detention um and in the meeting room there was three chairs i remember this distinctly one person was sitting here one person sitting here and the other chair was empty uh but in the vision like the chair wasn't empty uh because he was there so jeez <laughs> every time i tell this story i get emotional anyways so vision's kind of changing and he's like carrying me up to the staircase and (laughs) my aunt had passed away and my grandpa had passed away like just a year before that um or like a little bit before that and then there was some other people there um there was two kids and my mom had two miscarriages like there's two kids there and my great grandma like the it was kind of revealed to me later that who these people were and they were like we're praying for you like we can't wait um to see you again um and it was just like wow (laughs) this is crazy um so anyways that was just like what the vision was and i'm crying obviously like i am now Mm -hmm. but a lot more (laughs) (laughs) and um like, I knew what I had to do to have a relationship with Jesus. It was to forgive, like, the priest that, or not the priest, sorry, not the priest, the um, judge that had done this, and also my biological father. There was just a lot of brokenness that I had built up and bottled up for so, so, so long. Um, 
And then there's all these people that are praying over me. I never, ever have seen that in the Catholic Church before. Um, and then I just, like, felt this openness. Like, I finally forgave them. Like, I felt a physical, like, opening of my heart. Um, and it was, like, the most freeing thing ever. <laughs> I'm so... <laughs> oh, my gosh. Anyways, um... And I felt that that was the first time I was like, wow, this is what love feels like. And I was like, wow, why have I not felt that in the Catholic Church? Like, what have I, what have I been missing? And so this is my junior year. And I was just really confused at that point. And um, I need to, like, take a minute. Gift of tears. Let it go. <laughs> I know you live for this. So you'll, like, screenshot this. <laughs> Anyways, um, I was just really confused. It's like, should I be going to this church? Because this is where I feel like I feel something. And I'm not feeling that in the Catholic church. Um, but then, like, after a while, like, I found Life Teen in St. Helens. And, like, building a relationship with all of those people. And then learning more about the Catholic faith and, like, the charismatic renewal. And, like, learning about this stuff even recently. It's just, like, yeah, all the stuff that you loved about, you know, the non-denominational church. Like, you can get that in a Catholic church, too. But with all of these other amazing things. Like, you're not going to get the Eucharist over there. Like, you're not going to get Mary over there. Like, I need that. Like, that's a, that's a non-negotiable. Um... And so that's just so amazing that you can also have that in the Catholic Church too. Anyways, okay. <laughs> I know it's like when you're saying I'm just thinking about talking, you know, to these women at that night of November second, and you know, my thing is like, I'm Catholic. I have the Eucharist. I have, you know, same thing. It's like if anyone's missing anything, you guys are missing it. <laughs> you know? It's like, but you know, it was it was pride, right? And we know what pride is, and it's you know, so the Lord humbled me in mm-hmm. that. But he also preserved just um, the desire for the Eucharist and for my Catholic faith. And I'm just so grateful for that because so many people, you know, they have an experience like you had. And they're like, it it brings them to life. And they want that. Mm-hmm. And so it's real easy if they're not rooted and grounded in their Catholic faith yeah. to just take that walk and go after it. And yeah, I've seen it too many times. But yes, I'm, I'm so grateful that the Lord has preserved me for... Mm-hmm for being here and not, not stepping away. So, mm-hmm. Yeah. Awesome story. <laughs> okay. But again, you know, that whole thing too, is like, why can't I find this in the Catholic church? And so, you know, when, when this all happened with me, the Lord made it very clear that, you know, he wasn't going to send me to Africa. Cause people are like, Oh, if I give my life to the Lord, yeah, I'm going to go to Africa, you know, and all this <laughs> kind of stuff. And it's like, no, he, he made it very clear that my mission field would be the Catholics in the pews. Okay, because mm-hmm. I had that Catholic pride. I had like, you know, and I would pat myself on. I'm a good, I'm a good Catholic. I take my kids to church every Sunday. I do this, I do that. They go, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I had that as like, I'm like, I'm at, at the top of the heap of, you know, being a good Catholic. You know, I, you know, and I would do things. I volunteered at church, um, our old church. And, um, you know, I would do all these things. So it was like, you know, this, this pride. And, um, and I was missing so much. You know, I, 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 I was like skimming the surface. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when this experience happened, it just, you know, took me down level after level after level. And so, you know, what I'm saying, if I thought I was all that, if I thought that I was such a great Catholic, how many other people are sitting in these pews thinking that they're fine, that they got it, they're they're coming to church every Sunday, and it just broke my heart, you know, that it's like, I want people to know the fullness. I want them to have that, you know, that step over that line of just being totally in love with the Lord and being filled with his spirit and being used and, you know, by, you know, by the Lord to, to, you know, evangelize and to share your faith and to do all those things. And, you know, that's the thing. It's like, you know, God has so much more for us, you know, than we don't even know because we don't, we don't know that we don't know anything. And it's like, um, first Corinthians 12 is, it talks about the spiritual gifts. And I get frustrated sometimes because, you know, the reading will come up and they'll like skip the part that lists all the, the spiritual gifts. And I'm like, wait a minute, those are really important. Um, and actually I wrote it down here. Somewhere, somewhere, somewhere. 
well, maybe I don't have it here real quick. It's, well, it's the, hang on. I have okay, here. right here. Yeah, 1 Corinthians 12, 1 through 11. And um, it says, now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. Okay, so we need to know this stuff. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray by, uh, to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit. And <clears throat> there are a variety of services, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but it's the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. Okay, he gives us the Spirit. He gives us these gifts for the benefit of the common good, okay, for our brothers and sisters, for our church. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, to another the utterance of knowledge, <clears throat> according to the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the, the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same Spirit who allots to each one individually just as the Spirit chooses. So if these, I mean, you know, there's tons of different gifts, you know, that mm -hmm. the Lord gives us. But, you know, these charismatic gifts he has for everyone, mm -hmm. you know. So um, I've had this conversation, you know, with a, a dear priest and just like if every person in the parish knew what their spiritual gift was, Mm -hmm. Could you imagine if they were active, you know, actively walking in there? So if it was prophecy or miracles or healings, you know, it's like if they were walking in that, could you imagine what the church would be like? But, you know, so often these aren't even read. And it's like if people aren't being told that, you know what, the Holy Spirit wants to use you. He wants to move in you, you know, these gifts so you can serve the church and serve each other. And it just like blows my mind, you know, because we have a healing ministry at church called the Heart of Jesus, and we have the opportunity to pray with people, and we have seen such amazing things of the Lord working, you know, and even I'll share an experience that I had. Um, we were out of town, and I was with my husband, my daughter, and her family, and we were going, we were at a wedding down in Atlanta, and we had to go from one hotel to the next, and this 20-minute drive from the one hotel, something just like came over me and by the time we got to the hotel in downtown um atlanta i couldn't even get out of the car they had to come and get a wheelchair and roll me up to the room and they got me in the room and the only thing i could do was just lay on the floor they had a marble floor in the in the bathroom the only thing i could do was just lie on the floor because i just felt so horrible i couldn't even like pinpoint like what it was it was something in my midsection but i just i couldn't function i couldn't stand and so i called um the doc on demand or the teledoc whatever and they said they would have someone call me back in 45 minutes but meanwhile i'm just on the floor and my daughter's like what can i do my husband's like what can i do i don't know what to do you know and, and um i'm like just let me be and i just the coldness of the marvel just like just felt good so my daughter came in and she just like starts praying over me and she's like renouncing the sickness and she is praying against you know the devil's you know ploy and you know just asking for the lord to bring healing and she's just like praying i can't even remember exactly what she said but, you know, she prayed and then she, you know, got up and she left the room and I'm laying there. And all of a sudden I'm like, I feel okay. And I'm like, am I okay? I feel okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so I laid there. I laid there for like another half an hour, I think. <laughs> and um, then I got up, walked into the room and they're like, <laughs> you know, like, what the heck? And um, even when, like when the teledoc called back, I'm like, okay, this is what I was feeling. Then my daughter prayed over me. <laughs> And then I feel fine now. And so she says, okay, if it comes back, she goes, it's probably appendicitis or gallstones or something. She goes, go straight to the emergency room. Don't go to urgent care because they need a da, da, da. I'm like, okay, I think I'm okay though. So that to be said, if my daughter didn't know and understand the power of prayer and to renounce and to cast out and to, you know, it's like, what would have happened? I mean, you know, it's like my husband, I mean, they were, they were praying for me, but it was like her taking that like, like authority of just like, you know mm -hmm. what, like leave my mama alone, you know? Mm -hmm. And, um, and so it was, it was that kind of thing. And in the same thing, it's like in our church, if people had that understanding, okay, 
when a child is sick or when a, a ill, you know, a loved one is sick or, you know, whatever, that you go and you lay hands. I mean, it says it in the Bible, right? Like the, you know, you, you lay hands and you pray for that person. And it's like, you know, the sick do become well. I mean, it's a hundred percent. No, God, you know, we trust God's will and everything. We, you know, we, we put it in his hands, but we do our part to bring the person and say, like, you know, the guys that put the, the paralytic through the roof of the, you know, the mm-hmm. house to Jesus mm-hmm. because he couldn't get there on his own. So it's like, okay, Lord, we're, we're putting this person in front <laughs> of you, you know, however way we can, you know, the best of our ability. And, you know, we're going to leave it up to you to, to make the decision on what to do. But it's like, she understood mm-hmm. that God does things, miraculous things, mm-hmm. you know, and it was just such a, a witness to her, to me, you know, to people I share the story to, you know, that, yes, this is how we, this is how we, we, we fight back, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. with the Lord. Yeah. And like a small, I don't know if you want to tell this story, but we had, um, done a podcast with Peter shadow, which is a healing ministry. And, um, that was like your first <laughs> interaction mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. like, I don't know, like, what you would call it but that's the first time you heard about a healing yeah, kind of like ministry. a discovery of first exposure to the charismatic movement mm-hmm. or just like what charismatics do in general i was like oh i didn't i didn't realize that people like within the catholic faith do that yeah because the only thing i've seen before that is like televangelists that do like this over-the-top production and then they like prove somebody proves that it's fake uh, somehow by using security footage and that they <laughs> they pay the people to to go up and then fall and it's just like mass uh, uh, like mass yeah. hysteria yeah, yeah. or confusion or whatever and so yeah I was like very intrigued by the idea and then hearing the miracles that uh, they talked about and that mm-hmm. like just people in the movement have talked about mm-hmm. was wild so then yeah you have refused to go get your wisdom teeth taken out uh, and your teeth were hurting really, really bad. Yeah. And then we were just sitting on the couch. I was like, I don't know what to do for you. Like, I'll try the, I'll try the prayer thing. My wisdom teeth were hurting all day. Like, I was out the whole day. Like, it, I, may, I don't know if I spiked a fever or something. Like, it was just so painful. I couldn't eat anything. I couldn't talk. Like, just putting a hot compress on. And you could my, barely open your mouth. Yeah, I could barely open like a, my mouth. It mm. was like a level eight, nine oh, pain. It, it hurt yeah. really, really bad. Um, but then you can continue. <laughs> yeah, and then I was like, I'll just try this prayer thing. Like, let's yeah, see. like we just heard about I, I've this. I've tried to, like, because why not? Like, what, what do I have to lose? Like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. either you're going to still be in pain or it will work. So yeah, and then we'll it's not it in shot. front of anybody either. So it's not like, oh, we're super embarrassed that this didn't work or whatever. Like, it's just us two in mm-hmm. our apartment. Yeah. Continue. No. So, I'm like, okay, I'll give it a ch- shot. I'll try to model it after what we've heard throughout the conversations. And it, it came out pretty close to, like, how people would do it. And I'm laying my hand on, like, the spot to, so, like, by her tooth. Uh, and, not like in my mouth. <laughs> yeah, right like here. on your cheek, and <laughs> saying the saying the prayer, uh, asking the Holy Spirit, uh, like Jesus, we trust in you, and uh, renouncing the pain, asking to cast the pain away, and in like with the power of the Holy Spirit and Jesus, we cast this pain, and we want the the teeth, we want her mouth to go back to how it norm mm-hmm. how it is supposed to normally function. Mm-hmm. And then a couple of seconds later, she's losing her mind <laughs> because I'm like, what happened? What do you mean? I felt something in my hand, some warmth, and that was okay. it for me. But then the pain. I literally, like, it went away instantly as soon as he said it. And I was like, holy crap. Like, this did not just work. <laughs> like, there's no way that that worked. That is awesome. And it did. And I mean, like, I still don't have my wisdom teeth out. <laughs> but, um, I, I kid you not, and I know there's going to be some people in the comments that are going to be like, no, 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 that's not true. Like, but, like, it is, and whatever. You could say what you want, but it did happen. <laughs> and, yeah, I'm a believer. <laughs> that is incredible. But it's, it's just God just blessing you and showing you and teaching you and, you know, bringing you along and mm-hmm. opening you up to the power. And as a husband, you know, you have authority, right? Mm-hmm. You have spiritual authority, you know, of your wife and you have spiritual authority. And it's like, you know, for you not to take it 
you know, and pray for her, you know, is a sin, right? I mean, <laughs> and I don't know what, but it's like, you know, it's like you need to, you know, you need to. And that's just beautiful. That's mm-hmm. just a beautiful thing. So good for you. Good for you <laughs> to take that step, you know, and God showed you. Yeah. That is true. It was crazy. I thought you were like faking it at first. You like, did think that are, I was faking it. What are you doing? Like, but I did feel. I did feel some sort of warmth. And that or... is that is indicative, you know, of the Holy Spirit working. You people say that a lot of times. You just you know, I have your hand, and they're like, mm-hmm. your hand was so hot, you know, or something. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that that is that is true. Yeah, I could mm-hmm. I could talk perfectly normal. Like I could open my mouth. Like my that my was mouth wasn't the hurting. Yeah, that was that's crazy. what really changed and made you believe it because i could not even talk mm, mm. before yeah i couldn't I was tell like, the pain that mm-hmm. worked. but i could tell that you couldn't open your mouth mm-hmm. and, and yeah. so then to be able to like fully because i was that. moving my jaw around and i was like wow this this isn't painful anymore and then talking yeah. to you about it it was just like so how does that not make you want to just like run and just like <laughs> learn and grow and just like have that explode in your in mm-hmm. your life you know what i mean and it's like well that's why we started going to some of the, the oh, different healing masses yeah. and things okay around but the thing that i have the problem with is i feel like i'm pressured to fall back and rest in the spirit have you rested in the spirit no okay and i'm scared to because i, I feel like nobody's gonna catch me i'm gonna fall <laughs> i'm gonna hit my head whatever which i know is probably kind of ridiculous because uh-huh. they're like trained to catch you but I did feel very pressured uh, and I felt like they were trying to push me back mm. on purpose. Mm-hmm. So that's what I didn't like. That's so then a no-no. I, I was like, okay, mm-hmm. I'm, I can go to these, but I'm going to sit in a chair instead because I don't want to feel like they're purposely trying to push they me back. They did actually like push you a little bit kind of back. But And everybody has said I'm, has, I'm like resisting them. Well, yeah, you're resisting, obviously. I mean, you're, you're just <laughs> obviously. <sitting there. laughs> but I mean, sometimes when people say you push me down, I'm like, I did not push you down, you know, I did, but it's like the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon and it's mm. like, and they're thinking, I said, no, that wasn't me. It's like, you know, my touch is like light, you know, and, mm-hmm. and, but they're, they're feeling like they're being pushed and it's like, it's the power of the Holy Spirit coming upon you. Mm. That is, you know, and the thing is, it's like, it, it doesn't happen to everybody. You know, if you're resistant and you're, you're digging your heels and it's not going to happen to you. <laughs> well, I shouldn't say that because I've seen people get thrown against the wall, you know, <laughs> but, uh, um, <laughs> But it's, you know, but it's, it's, it's that openness, it's that surrendered Mm -hmm. spirit. Okay. When you are just there, okay, Lord. And you know what? I have caught like, you know, men, you know, I mean, you know, and I put them down on the floor, you know, like guys that are 220 pounds. I mean, I could do it. Okay. As a a white haired (laughs) grandma. (laughs) Um, But yeah, people will not let you fall. It's more of you getting over your, Mm -hmm. you know, hesitations, fear, whatever, just skepticism, whatever it is, and just saying, Jesus, I trust in you, Holy Spirit, come, you mm-hmm. know, and just allow him to do it, you know what, and it may happen, it may not, you know, it's, it's, but you leave it up to him, you right. know, and you don't leave it up to you. If he wants to bless you, let him bless you. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah what right. happens when you're resting in the Spirit? Uh, you know, different things. Um, you know, a lot of times it's just, I mean... It, you know, it's just like this, this calm. I mean, it's like, so you are aware of everything going around, you know, it's like, if it's at a praise and worship, you hear the music going, but it's just like this, this, there's different intensities, you know, at different times, depending on what you need. I mean, I've, you know, seen people just like cry and cry as they're laying there and just the tears are just flowing. I mean, the Lord, the, the Holy Spirit is ministering to that person. Mm-hmm. So like whatever is going on, you know, if it's something that, you know, there's some kind of, um, you know, turmoil in their life or whatever. Um, I, <laughs> I remember I worked with youth group for several years and I remember these two girls, they were going through a really hard time, their sisters. Um, and they were just, just, it was a tough time in their family. And like they both rest in spirit. I mean, you know, separate, but they got the gift of laughter and it was like, they're just like laughing their guts out, you know, (laughs) as they're, you know, lying there. But it was like, it was like the Lord was just filling them with some joy, you know, because it'd Mm -hmm. been, they'd been such a hard, you know, you know, road for them. Um, you know, I've seen people get the gift of tongues as they're laying on the floor. Um, you know, I've just, I've seen people lay there for, you know, a half an hour um, and just, just rest in the spirit. And, you know, people have had like visions or, you know, different things. I mean, it, it's like, you know, we don't put God in a box on how, you know, he operates and, you know, what he does with the person. Um, you know, it's, so it's different. It's different every time. It's different with every person. And we just let him be God. 
-hmm. but you know to have that openness to receiving it is you know is part of it i mean i would pray like with like you know like little four-year-olds and they would go down the spirit you know Mm -hmm. we had a, a very cool experience years ago there was um uh, a young girl, maybe teenage years at that point, um, severely um, mentally um, disabled, um, you know, no verbal skills or anything like that. And um, her mom was part of our one of our teams, and we, we prayed over this young girl. And this was actually in the old church, and she was sitting on the, on the pew, and she just like went down in the spirit. We really weren't expecting that, but here it's like the Holy Spirit came upon her and she she rested and it was like like the coolest thing you know because it's like no one could argue that what happened wasn't the holy spirit because mm-hmm. she wouldn't have been able to do that on her own right so yeah so the lord is just so cool so mm-hmm. cool there's so many cool experiences that's the thing you know this whole world like you're saying why do why do i have to go to this you know protestant church to experience something like that why can't i find this in the catholic church and and that's the thing and and that's you know i feel like a lot of times people leave because they feel like there's like nothing you know they don't have the understanding of what the eucharist is they don't have an understanding of you know the richness of our faith Mm -hmm. and so you know it's really easy to just get pulled away Mm -hmm. and go other places when you don't know what you have in the Mm -hmm. palm of your hand but um the charismatic renewal has been such a gift to so many like i said millions and millions of people whose lives have been transformed through the power of the holy spirit and you know we have uh with the youth group we have a talk called ordinary christianity and it's like, this should be ordinary, mm-hmm. right? This is like, you know, like what the apostles were. This is how they started the church, right? This is by signs and wonders and, you know, all this kind of thing. This is how the church started and they were able to spread and go. And it's like, you know, you know some people say, well, that just happened back then. No, it's happening now. Why would God, he's the same today, yesterday, and tomorrow. I mean, it's like, you know, he's the same and his spirit is the same. And we need it more today, probably because of all the, you know, craziness <laughs> going on in our world. We, we need him. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, so it's, uh, yeah, we have it. And I just, I, it saddens me that people look at it with, um, not even like skepticism. I mean, it's, it's good to be skeptical about things and to, to look at it and, and, and you know, but Ask just, yeah, yeah, but to, you know, be, um, judgmental, judgmental and, and disdain and just like, you know, just like cut it down when they really don't understand and know what it's all about and it's like you know if it was bad the popes would have said so right the church would have said so Mm. they have not condemned it they have endorsed it they have encouraged it they've had you know big gatherings in rome you know i know inviting charismatics from around the world so and you know just i forget you know the way that you know like look it up just like different you know comments that the popes have made just you know how vital it is to the to the life of the church for people to come alive in their faith in this way and like i said you know me you know thinking i'm a good catholic and doing all that and then me being filled with the holy spirit and coming to life there's no there's there's it's like night and day it's just Mm -hmm. a world of difference and um you know 91 how many years ago is that (laughs) it's like it's a long (laughs) time right and it's the, the 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 fervor and the desire um, is still the same. I mean, you know, different seasons of life allow me to do things and, you know, and not do things. Um, like right now, my season of life is taking care of my parents. Um, so, but, you know, I can still pray and I can still sneak out for prayer sessions every once in a while and, you know, things like that. But um, he does, he does meet me in just special ways. And he wants that for everybody. He wants that fullness of life for everyone. Mm-hmm. You know, if anyone says that they're bored, you know, in the Catholic faith, they don't know what they're missing because it's there. Mm-hmm. What about people that want to, they're interested in this and they're in the, the local community here in like Cleveland, Newberry, just like, I guess the Cleveland diocese. Mm-hmm. How can they get involved? How can they like... I don't know, find things like that. Okay. This. Um, well, there is um, Catholic Renewal Ministries is the um, the group for the diocese. Um, that sort of umbrella is the Catholic Renewal Ministries for the, for the diocese. And one thing, I'm not sure when this is going to be out, but um, we do an annual conference 
every year. Um, this year is on July 27th at uh, St. Peter's. I'm sorry. Um, St. Where is St. Albert? St. Albert? Albert the Great. I'm St. Ambrose. It's not Ambrose. It's St. <laughs> Albert the Great. Thank you. Thank you. Um, just found out yesterday that our main, one of our main speakers was in an accident and had a pullout. So um, we're praying for a young man named Grayson Dahl who was um, injured. Um, and we are really looking forward to him coming because he has such a great testimony in, in ministry. Um, so uh, waiting to find out, you know, what plan B is going to be, but you know, God will pull it together. We're not, we're not worried about that. Um, but that, that's one way to be exposed, um, to something. Um, uh, there are prayer groups throughout families in Christ. Jesus is, a is a community that is sort of spread out throughout and they have households, um, where, you know, people can meet on a weekly basis and, you know, just have the fellowship, you know, the worship, the prayer teachings and, and such. Um, there are things called the life in the spirit seminars, uh, which is like an introductory course. And that is what I went through. My husband, and I went through back in, um, September of 91, 92. And it was like a 12 week course at that point. Um, so we went, you know, every week for 12 weeks and we were just given the basics, the understanding of God's love and who is Jesus and repentance and, you know, all the way through until like, you know, what the gifts were, the spiritual gifts and, um, like the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, they, you know, take you through a night of, of receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit, um, which is, you know, transformational. And then it's like, you know, what do you do next? How do you, you know, move forward? Um, so there are things available, um, you know, reaching out to Catholic Renewal Ministries is one way. Um, uh, families in Christ Jesus, I can give you, you know, contact information on that. But mm -hmm. there are, are groups out there that could, you know, welcome people in. And, you know, the thing is, too, is like, um, you know, this all started back in the late 60s, right, early 70s. There are people that participate in the 70s who are still actively, like, doing this. So in a lot of ways, it's a grain community because, you know, these people who were set on fire, who saw like when it was like, like this wildfire going through, you know, mm -hmm. all over the place, um, you know, they're still there, but they're, they're getting a lot older and, you know, the ability to, um, you know, share it with younger people and, you know, just even the way the culture is, you know, it's like back in the day, like, you know, 92, you know, to commit to doing a weekly meeting, you know, for 30 years was like, no problem, you know, now you know, to say to someone, can you come to this meeting for, for four weeks? And they're like, I can't do that. I can't, you know what I mean? It's <laughs> like, um, so it's, you know, especially when it's not a priority, it was a priority for me, you know, at that point. So it was easy for me to say that, but for someone who's like, sort of like interested and, and curious, you know, they may not want to put the time and the effort in, but, um, it's like, you got to give God a chance. You have to, you know, have an open heart and a desire, you know, for that deeper relationship for mm -hmm. him to be able to work in you mm -hmm. and through you yeah, where can people find out more about the retreat and sign up and everything um so um crmweb.org is um the um catholic renewal ministries website and they have the form on there and they have the information on there so that is one place um but yeah saint albert um it's like an all day there's just you know great talks there's mass father damien ference is gonna uh, be the um celebrant for our mass mm. and um we have matt fafrick and his gang of musicians gonna be playing and doing worship throughout throughout the day and then in the evening there's going to be a healing service and um you know we're just expecting god to work i mean beautiful things happen every single time and um god is very good very mm -hmm. good mm -hmm. but to give him a taste I'll give them a taste of, of what this is all about. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for coming on. You're welcome. You're welcome.